handle a couple of these classes. Right now we have a developer class, right? And we have the, the website. Uh, so let's create a couple models to, uh, to represent them here in our lecture. So let's do a new uh, class and we'll do your um, package uh, lecture dot JWC dot and we'll do model. And here we'll implement a um, website first, website. And let's declare just a couple of uh, uh, properties for the website. And we want to keep track of the ID, so integer ID. Uh, and the only reason we're keeping track of the ID is that we know that this is eventually going to be rewritten into a database. Typically, we don't need the ID. Right? If this is a strictly Java-only application, there is no need to keep IDs. Right? The object is its own ID. Right? It has its own identity. Uh, but because we know that this is going to be uh, serialized or written to a database and it's part of the data that we want to keep track of, we're going to be capturing it here in the ID. But it has no real use uh, in the Java data modeling uh, world. right? <coughs> uh, so let's uh, keep track also, also of the, uh, the name and the description. Okay. Uh, and we can generate everything else uh, using source, uh, generate all the getters and setters, and we can select all of them and just generate them down below. There they are. So we have all the setters and getters. Uh, plus, we'll probably want the constructors for these, so let's generate those as well. Generate the constructors. Uh, first, we'll generate the one that takes all the arguments, ID, name, and description. Probably not, not ID. Well, let's see. We will uh, let's declare one with ID and one with not ID. Let's uh, declare. There it is. There we go. And we'll declare a couple more. Uh, source. We'll create one with at least the no argument constructor. Okay. And probably another one with without the ID. Uh, where is it? Source. Create generate constructor with all of them except the ID. There we go. All right. Uh, we'll also need the data model for the, uh, for the developer. Right? So let's create also the data model for developer. Let's see, we go file. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, there we go, there it is. So we'll, in the same package, we'll create another class for the developer. Uh, and the attributes for the developer are, yeah, let's see, we have uh, integer ID, and we have, um, oh, and this should all be private, obviously. And this is um, string username, username, private string uh, password, and private string first name, private string, last name. The, the fields don't have to match, right? but it's very common that we call the same, we use the same names for the fields in the, uh, in the Java data model as we use the same name fields for the, for the, for the database. Later on, when we look at uh, object or, um, relational mapping, uh, that there are tools that allow you to you know, take this Java model and it can generate for you the schema uh, or vice versa, giving a schema, you press a button and it generates the entire data model. Uh, it's easier if you maintain those names the same. Okay, it makes it much easier to map the two worlds between them. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, we also might have here the um, an array list of websites. Let's see, these are my websites. Now, these are all the websites for this developer. Again, it might be that you implement it as a map, right? That says that that user has you know, these, these websites, right? As opposed to having a strictly one-to-many relationship, it could be a many-to-many -many as well, right? It, it would not, it, you could implement, if it's a many-to-many, -many, then perhaps on the websites, you would have an array list of developers, right? Where 
The developers knows all of their websites, but the websites also know all their developers, right? Uh, so so we'll, we'll, we'll revisit that uh, a little later when we do it from the JavaScript version of this. Uh, we can load a array list here. We'll have a, J, a, a, J, a Java util, very good. Uh, and we'll create here the setters and getters for these, for all of them. And we'll create also the constructors, the constructor, uh, the all argument constructor. We'll create the, um, the no argument constructor. And a simpler one uh, with no ID and maybe no websites for convenience. All right, so there we go. So we got already some, some data modeling uh, uh, going here. Uh, if uh, what, what, what we need to be able to do is be able to read uh, the, the data da the data in the database and populate instances of these things, right? Instances of developers, instances of websites, and, and then be able to then use them at a higher level, right? So we're, we're, we're going to write the data layer here uh, meant to be used by some application that we're building. The application will use our data access objects, will use our data model, uh, we, we haven't thought of what that application is, although yes, we, we have a little bit of uh, know. We somewhat know where we're going. With that so let's let's now focus on writing the data access layer, right? Uh, in terms of the data access objects, right? Let's do that next.